Hello everyone, it's Jason at Dutch Miller Subaru. I am back today. Now today I don't have a tech tip. I actually wanted to talk about something with you today. I actually recently got to go to Indianapolis and visit Subaru's factory where they build the Subarus here in America. So today I'm going to be telling you about my trip to Indianapolis and about the factory and if you want to stick around at the end after the factory I can tell you about my travel woes too all right so let's talk about the plant so when I got to the plant it is on this massive campus and they took us to a training facility that they have there at the plant so there was a big group of us and they divided us into two groups there was a group going on the tour which is what I got to do first and there was a group that did classroom work so for the tour, what they actually do is they have these headsets they give you that you put on and there's like a little receiver thing, you clip it onto your belt. And the tour guide has a microphone they basically talk into and you can hear the tour guide in those earphones. So they do that because you know the, the plant is obviously, it's gonna be a little bit noisy and that way the tour guide's not trying to shout and tell everyone about stuff. So we walked from the training facility to the actual plant and first they take you into like these, uh, I would just describe them as business offices. You're, they were, we were walking through the business offices and on this wall they had kind of like a history of the plant, talking about what, where it kind of started with and how it's grown. They also had a big framed uh, Peyton Manning uh, Indianapolis Colts jersey on the wall that was signed by Peyton Manning. I thought that was really cool. I was like, man, I wish I could grab that. Um, so they tell you about uh, there's different uh, buildings. Uh, they they actually have a parts department uh, there on site. They told us that they actually have the ability to make parts for 15 model years back. They said the main plant itself can handles like the first two years, and then that facility handles the other 13 years. So if you got someone out there that needs like a bumper or something, uh, they are able to produce it. So. Once we got through that part, we went upstairs and they had a video for us to watch. It was about uh, how they paint the vehicles. Now we can't, for the tour, they just really, they can't take you into where they paint the vehicles because of like, you know, the paint, the fumes and all that stuff. So they have a video where they talk about it and they show you what they do. One thing I found very neat about the painting was that they, uh, they will paint the cars with the doors on them. And then they take the doors off and those doors actually have their own little journey that they go through in the plant where they are finished building them and everything. They said later on those same doors get reattached back onto the same vehicle. I kind of thought it was amazing they could keep track of that throughout that massive plant. But they said they want to keep the paint, you know, pretty much universal looking. So when you, when you go on the tour, they take you into the facility and you're on catwalks above the actual plant floor so we're not going to be on the floor in the way or anything like that you know and you walk through it on the catwalks the tour guys telling you about stuff so we saw a place where they're actually uh they have like these big rolls of metal and they're feeding them through a machine and stamping them out into these little uh i would just call them metal squares and those are used for manufacturing parts you know on site uh as we went on through the tour uh we saw this massive, I mean massive machine. It was like five stories tall is what they told us. There was three stories above ground you can see and there's two stories down below ground you can't even see. And uh, this machine, they can make all kinds of different things in it. And what they were making the day we were there was uh, doors. That machine got up and rolling and it just started spitting out doors and there was guys at the end grabbing them and stacking them up and stuff. And uh, we saw a person come by and grab one of the doors because Subaru is constantly doing quality control checking to make sure everything is good to go. So they will pick really anything they make at the plant. They're going to pick some random sample of it and just check it out, make sure it's all good. Um, as we walked on through there, we eventually got to a point where they were, you can see welding. Now for that one, we could kind of see it. They have like tarps up. So you can kind of see the robots that are in there welding and stuff. You got to be, of course, be careful with you know, welding. Um, but it was really neat because the cars would be sitting there and uh, they would kind of rise up and you'd see all these arms just come in and just start welding 
just all kinds of stuff and then they would all stop back up the cars would go down they would go forward a little bit rise up and here's all the arms coming in to do more welding and the, the, they actually had different subarus uh in a line so it wasn't like as a you know all outbacks all legacies the robots can tell uh what vehicles they're welding and where they should be doing the welding at uh, after we got through there, we went on through to an area where we saw workers who were actually in the cars putting stuff in and stuff. And the tour guide mentioned that the uh, the teams, there's like a team of eight. They said every person on the team knows how to do every job on the team. And they said what they will do is that a person will do a job for two hours and then they'll switch them into a different job. They said that way people aren't just getting bored, you know, doing the same thing. And it helps to make sure that they don't compl get complacent and start making mistakes. So I was like, you know, and you're also, they said you're, they're getting to use different mu muscle groups and stuff. So um, I, was like, I was like, that was a great idea, I thought. Um, so as we went on through, we saw where they, uh, cars were starting to come off the line. Uh, they had an actual me full mechanics bay there. So they said that, you know, occasionally, yes, yeah, something goes wrong. You know, it's a man-made machine and we have a full mechanic space. So if we find an issue, the car goes there and they work on it until it's fixed. And then they put it back out to keep it going through the line. Uh, we saw, I saw where they calibrate like the eyesight technology, blind spot detection. They have a little bays that they do all that in. Uh, so it, it was uh, just an amazing facility. Uh, very very clean uh safety is obviously a big top priority there um i could see, when i was coming in i could see it because they have like they call it a motor pool where they put all the cars i mean it's just a massive parking lot with cars everywhere so that's where they go after they uh, get them through the factory and stuff uh, so one thing that i found uh, really neat was that the factory is broken down into like different departments and they told us that if any of those departments go down and they're not producing anything, it can cost uh, Subaru, it was like $10,000 every minute. So I was like, wow. But what they have done though, is they have what they call buffers, where it, the way I would kind of explain it is like, they have stuff that's already done. It just hasn't been kind of pushed onto the factory just yet. So if that like department, let's say it does go down, there's still stuff that's been completed that they can still keep pushing through the factory while they're trying to get whatever the issue is fixed so overall it was a pretty uh, amazing experience to be able to get to see that and see what subaru does building cars um, they actually have they have two lines that they produce cars on and they did mention the outback is built on both lines because they said it is the most popular subaru you know that people buy and they have uh, started making the cross track here in america they mentioned that they brought the Crosstrek over because it is like immensely more popular in the United States than it is in like Japan. You know, they, they said the Impreza and WRX are still being built in Japan because they're more popular over there. So that's my thoughts on my trip to see the factory in Indianapolis. So thanks for watching that. Now, if you want to stick around, I'm going to talk about my travel woes now. All right, so let's talk about my travel woes. So my flight, my first flight out of where I live, plane comes in, people get off, you know, they let us get on. They inform us that the uh, plane apparently had hit a bird uh, come in or something like that. And they said, hey, we've got to get a mechanic to check this out. You know, we can't just take off. So we got to make sure they didn't damage anything. So I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's obviously a good thing because I don't want to crash. So they said it would probably take about 20 minutes for the mechanic to show up. And the, the captain of the flight, he said, I don't anticipate it to take that long, but I honestly, I think it did. Guy shows up, they look over the plane. He finally gives them, he says, you're good to go as far as damage. He said, I just got to get this cleaned up. So I guess the bird splattered, who knows what. But they, he gets it cleaned up and then they said, all right, you guys, you're good. We take off and I'm flying into Charlotte, North Carolina. So when I landed in Charlotte, I basically had like two minutes before my flight was supposed to be gone or something like that. And I'm like, I'm not making this. I had I had to wait for my carry-on because they made us put the carry-ons under the plane. So I had to wait for them to get that. By the time I got it, I mean, I was just, I was screwed. So 
uh, American Airlines automatically rebooked my flight. And where I had to go is where I had to go to LaGuardia, New York. So I flew up there. And then I then I was able to catch a flight from there in Indianapolis. Now, for this trip, because Subaru was the one who put it together, I had some contact numbers in case of any travel issues. And I had contacted them, let them know what happened. Subaru arranged to have a, uh, a driver at the airport to pick me up. He, I, I, like, I literally came out of baggage claim. He had a little sign that had my name on it and everything. So, and he gave me a lift to the, uh, to the hotel. Uh, now Subaru had like a reception dinner and all this other things that's going on. I basically missed pretty much almost all of it. I got there at the very tail end and I had to find some food and I was able to hang out for a little bit with some of the people there. They were like, you know, they were like me who were there for the plant tour. Uh, so then, you know, went to bed, got up the next day, did the, did the Subaru stuff. They take me back to the Indianapolis and I had about three hours before my flight it was a flight back to Charlotte. And that uh, flight eventually does get delayed. So I, I eventually I'm on the plane flying to Charlotte. Of course, with the delay that happened, I missed my connecting flight home. So again, American Airlines automatically rebooked re -book, re me and they had, and then, now this is Friday night when this is going on. They had me booked for a flight leaving out. It was like Saturday, the next day, Saturday night at like 9 30 to fly to Washington DC and then fly home. And I'm like, man, I got to do something about this. So I, I waited through line. There was a huge line for American Airlines customer service and I get to talking to them and I'm like, hey, you know, there is an airport that is like 45 minutes down the road from where I'm trying to get to. I was like, do you guys fly there? And they're like, yes, we do. And so they do some looking and they're saying, I can get you get you to that airport. Uh, it was like tomorrow morning. It'll take off at like 9 or something like that, like 930. I'm like, that's the best you can do? They're like, that's the best we can do. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. Now they looked at why my flight got delayed and they were going to see they were like let me see if we can get you a hotel voucher for the evening and my flight was apparently delayed by weather and apparently i mean i don't fly much but apparently that if your flight gets delayed by a weather issue they consider that an act of god and they are not going to give you a hotel voucher so at that point i'm calling my wife to tell her what's going on and i'm trying to figure out what in the world am i going to do this is it's almost getting close to midnight i'm trying to figure out you know the hotel um I'm calling some hotels to find out if they have a shuttle service this late night to come pick me up. They don't. I checked Uber to see like what's it going to cost for me to get to a hotel. It was almost like you know thirty bucks. That's not even counting a tip because I know those guys that drive they expect a tip, and I'm just like I can't afford this. So I wind up just I'm just like well I'm just going to try to stay the night in the hotel in the in the terminal. So I, I thought maybe I could catch a cat nap or something. So I started watching some movies on a tablet and stuff and hanging out. And what I learned is in Charlotte, at their airport, apparently late at nights when they decide, hey, we're going to clean this place. So <laughs> there was no getting sleep because there's people going around with vacuum cleaners and all kinds of stuff. So just had to deal with it. So eventually, as the morning rolls around, I call some friends because I've, like, I've got to find someone that can pick me up at that airport. Got a, got a ride arranged and then flew flew in to the airport. Buddy was there to pick me up and I finally, he, you know, a little ride down the road and I'm finally home. But I was up for like, from like 6 a.m. on Friday and I, and I took a, like a cat nap when I got home for a little bit on Saturday. There wasn't much of one because I wound up, I had some stuff I had to do on Saturday. Now I didn't work Saturday. I was planned ahead and took that day off in case of what happened travel issues uh but i had to go get some stuff done but i didn't finally go to bed till like it was like after midnight so i, I was like literally up for like three days i felt like a zombie i told my wife i was like don't tell me nothing important don't have me sign anything because i'm not in my right mind and i went to bed and and who knows how long i would have slept because my wife actually woke me up <laughs> at 11 45 a.m on sunday and she was like are you going to sleep all day and i'm like i don't know i might have but we're not going to know the answer to that one now so that was my travel woes 
um, I enjoyed the trip to Indianapolis. I had a good time. I wish I could have got there sooner to get to partake of more of the activities that were going on and stuff. But being able to see the plant, I mean, that was just very cool. So if you stuck around for this long and watched about my travel woes, I really appreciate you sticking around to the end. So thanks so much. And I will be back again with some more Subaru Tech tip videos and some other stuff too. Why not? So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.